So the next question is, uh, what is working well in your We Are Church model that others can reproduce in mm -hmm. other areas in San Francisco or elsewhere? Okay, yeah. that's a good question. Okay, so those who don't know, I started a church in Southern California, just out of my living room, ended up growing to like 5,000 people. Um, not in my living room, but, uh, you know, so we did the typical church and that's all I knew what to do, but I got frustrated at a point just biblically. I'm going, wait a second. According to the Bible, every single one of these people has a supernatural gift that's meant to be used for the body. And I'm like, 5,000 people show up every week to, to hear my gift, see my gift. That's a lot of waste. Then I start thinking, how much does it cost to run this thing? Millions of dollars. And I'm going, gosh, how come people in other countries go to church for free? Like, that seems like a waste. So I'm wasting the, the human resource of these people that, according to Scripture, have a miraculous gift that they could contribute to the body, but they're just sitting there quietly. Meanwhile, they'll go to their companies and they're running big companies or doing this and that. And yet they just sit there and listen to me and year after year and just got so convicted. I thought, wait, and then the Bible says, oh, I forgot we're supposed to love each other. Like that's not a small command. Like that's over and over. He says, this is how they'll know you're my disciples by the way you love one another. And then there's over 50 one another's in the New Testament. So I'm going, God, I'm so sorry. Our people don't even like each other. You know, like I make them greet each other for 30 seconds. You know, like that's, that's the extent. And it doesn't, it's not like we're mean to each other. We, we just, we like people if they were like us and you would pick, you know, little clicks. But it, I was like, God, this, you wanted a church that was known for their love. You wanted a group of people where everyone was expressing their gifts and, and otherwise that body, he, he talks about we're a body. I'm one member, maybe I'm the mouth. But if the mouth is the only thing that's working in the church and I'm trying to drag the rest of the body along, chewing on the carpet and inching, <laughs> you know, I, what would a body look like where everyone's using their gifts and everyone's eagerly pursuing the spiritual gifts like 1 Corinthians tells us to do? Man, what could that be like? And is it even possible like if we were a church and started one right now, could we literally, by the power of the Holy Spirit, love each other so much that people would, it would blow people's minds? Like where none of us have a need because it's like, oh man, I just got fired. You work here? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I do have a prophetic gift though. Um, and, you know, like, would we then come around our sister and go, whoa, that was crazy. You were right in there. And he said it and it happened. You know, like, what do we do for her? Like, can we be known for this? And so when I came to San Francisco, I just thought, you know what? I, and again, it was that weird celebrity thing where I just go, I just want to hide. And I just, so there's one in the TL. Um, no one reads crazy love there. And uh, <laughs> I, go, I just want to go and just talk to people and pray for people. I don't want to gather people in gatherings where they can actually use their gifts. And, and could it be that we could actually obey all of the one another's? And, and then why would it cost anything? You know, if I'm just leading a small group, maybe I can just start multiplying that, teaching other people to, to lead and shepherd these groups. Maybe we get everyone reading the Bible. So we're on this reading plan. I don't know if you guys have seen the Read Scripture app. If you haven't, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, it just gives you a, a quick cartoon, like understanding of every book before you read it. And it's a daily reading plan to where we read through the Bible every year. So all of the people in the church, I mean, we've got guys coming off the streets out of prison to doctors and people that work here or, or Google and Everyone's on these same reading plans and everyone's in these, these homes. And so it costs nothing. We have like 30 pastors now that all do it for free. And, uh, and then, then we have like, uh, we send them out in twos and they're like, in, so we have like 14, 15 uh, house churches and we just plan on multiplying that doubling every year. 
And so in, in 10 years, we, sh we could have like 1.2 million people, you know, like the, the multiplication and free. Um, again, not to be stereotypical, but that's my heritage. We like cheap. Um, and so I'm like, whoa, we've got a few hundred people now and it costs nothing. And everyone's growing and everyone's having to read this book for themselves. And people are actually caring for one another. I don't even preach. You know, they just meet in their homes, they study, they pray, they care for one another. They're becoming the church, and I'm just loving it. And realizing these, these 30 guys that are leading this, and, and the women as well, it's like the way they've grown because they suddenly have responsibility. And I never realized that would happen. You see, it's just like those of us, when we first brought our first kid home from the hospital, it's like the fear the absolute fear like what do i do with it like i how do you keep it alive what do you you know <laughs> serious i mean that all that went through my mind like so the nurse isn't coming home like literally honey it's you and me we got to keep this alive like we've got to do, like it's it's an it's it's nightmarish in a way because you're just like no one taught me this i gotta figure it out but then you figure it out you know and you grow when you learn. And I'm seeing these guys going, hey, you're going to take care of these 10 people. How do I do that? You're going to help them study the word. You're going to help them counsel them through. And the way they rise up, you just figure it out. And so now these guys are like my best friends, you know, as we're all in this thing together versus one guy trying to teach everyone. I guess one guy put it like this. He goes, it's like being adopted rather than being at an orphanage. Um, you know, the church, the way I was doing it was like an orphanage, you know, here's just a bunch of kids with one leader. And rather than saying, no, you know what, we're going to put you into a home. And these guys are actually going to really know you and love you and care for you. I just heard this morning, you know, this, one of the gals that's new just, um, was pregnant with twins and lost the baby, but almost lost her life just started hemorrhaging and I, just the way she's only been around for two weeks. Her friends came in, the church came in, got her to the hospital, took the kid, the other kids, you know, watch them. And you guys, it's just like family. Cause it bugged me last night at, at the old church. You know, when I had the, uh, the big thing, I remember this kid from this gang that I baptized he, he was so involved and he left. And I remember him saying, when some, one of my friends asked him, hey, how come you're not at Cornerstone anymore? He said, ah, I didn't understand church. He goes, when I was baptized, he goes, I thought that was going to be like being jumped into the gang where it's like 24 seven, they're my family. Because I didn't know it was just somewhere we attend on Sundays. And I was like, oh, that makes me sick. That makes me so sick that the gangs are a better picture of family than the church of Jesus Christ. I, this, this, I, I can't, I can't live with that. I cannot live with that. We're going to, we're going to do something different, you know? So I don't know. Take what you can from that. Okay. I love it. I, I, I love these guys. It's not without its, its, its issues because relationships are messy and some days I think, oh, it was a lot easier when I could just preach, go back and drive off in my car and leave all of them like I will today. Like, I, <laughs> I don't have to care for your issue. You know, it's like, you can be mad, whatever. It's like, I'll never see you again. Like, this is easy, but you have this circle here and, and you're in each other's lives. And no offense, but it's not this Facebook. I can just put up what I want, you know, about myself. That's kind of like the way church was. It's like, let me just show you this one side on Sunday morning. And just like, okay, let me show you the best pictures of me and my greatest accomplishments. But when it's family, it gets messy. And you start finding out people's dirt, just like you know about your brother and sister and, and every Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's messy because it's family. But it's what Christ wanted. And so we fight for it. And it's, and it's been a blast.